So two years after 2017's It, we get It Chapter 2. Now one thing, I was, I'm going to ask whether to put on my list, but I've decided to put it off my list, but I'm keeping it on there. That with Eddie's wife is played by the same actress who plays Eddie's mum. Now, it makes sense that he would marry someone like his mum, but having the same actress... Ugh. Anyway, let's crack on with today's video. It Chapter 2 is a 2019 supernatural horror film and a sequel to the 2017 film It, both based on the 1986 novel by Stephen King. The film centres on the Losers Club reunited from their various lives apart from each other to come back to Derry to try and destroy Pennywise the Clown once and for all. Even though being apart they've mostly forgotten everything they have gone through and they have to spend time to try and find out what actually happened to them. When the film was released, unlike the first one, it actually was got mixed reviews. I mean, although the acting and production design was praised, it's got criticism for its length, its pacing and weaker scares compared to its predecessor. But what things have I found wrong with it? Well, here are 10 things I found wrong with it. Chapter two. Number 10, new targets. The beginning of this film is basically another version of Pennywise going after someone to kill, to feed off their fear. But he, for once, he's not going after the little children like he normally does. Now, I'm not on about the actor's age he killed, because the actor was 30. I get the impression this was more of a college student, because him and his boyfriend were talking about going off to New York City, or somewhere else, just to get out of Derry. Why has Pennywise actually gone for some, a different age group? Pennywise preferred going after children, because they were easier to scare, you got more fear out of them than you do from adults. So there was a logic behind that. There was no logic, and also, it didn't make sense why he was going more after adults than the children. Anyone, any answers or any theories? Maybe John Joe could do a theory video on uh, Pennywise the Clown. That would be awesome. Number nine, too much exposition. Yeah, this film liked to handhold you through everything. It didn't really leave much things in imagination. It told you absolutely every little thing that was going on, which probably didn't help pan out its three hour runtime. Leave some to the imagination. When we go to see films, that's one thing we like to see is actually thinking about what actually happened, going away, talking about it, come up with our own theories. But if you actually tell us every little thing that goes on in this film, we're gonna think, what's the point? It's open and shut. We're not gonna talk about it. Now, I've already said that uh, I've asked a friend of mine to do the uh, theory video, but, but you haven't got much space to make a theory video because everything in this film is there. We want to go away, we want to think about it and come up with our own explanations of why this happened and why this happened or why things are done like this. But this film doesn't give you that, that option because it just tells you absolute everything that's going on. Number eight, too much flashbacks. Now, I'm not, I'm not a fan of films being told in a flashback. Now, this film wasn't actually told in a flashback, it was actually told as a story. So it gets kudos for that, but there was just way too much of flashbacking of what actually happened 27 years ago. You know, the things that happened during the first film. This isn't Back to the Future 2 where you can go and show the same film from a different light. It didn't work. I, don't know, I mean it. The first act of the film, the first half an hour, was the gang getting back together in Derry. Bit long-winded, but it was fine. And the last act was the gang going after Pennywise the Clown. That was about 45 minutes. So there's an hour and 15 minutes of this film. And this film is three hours long. So you can guess what the rest of that runtime was. One hour, 45 minutes of them all having flashbacks about what happened during the events of the first film. I don't want to watch that. I enjoyed the first film. The first film was great. You don't need to now go show me more what happened during the first film because you're now taking my enjoyment away of the first film. We wanted to see the sequel. We want to know what goes on with the Adult Losers Club. Don't show us. One or two bits would have been fine, but an hour and 45 minutes of flashbacks. No, way too much. Number seven, Aliens. This is actually taken directly from the book. Try and keep it more close to the source material that actually Pennywise the Clown came to Earth millions of years ago in a meteorite. 
Now, I can understand that working in a book, and it probably works fantastically in the book. But on the big screen, I did feel it didn't work. In fact, when I watched that bit, I groaned. Now, I, same again, I understand they were trying to keep it close to the book. But I also do understand that during the creative process, some things from books will not translate onto the big screen, even though we want it to happen as much. Some things you put in, some things you don't put in. This is one of the things you shouldn't have put in. Which leads me nicely to my next point. Number six, where are the eggs? Now, for anyone who's just read the chapter titles, you're now thinking I'm doing a review on the Aliens film. But, as I was saying in the previous entry, some things translate from the book to the film, some things don't. The last entry did not. This entry would have done, but you kept it out. Shock horror, Pennywise is a girl. Seriously. In the book, they find Pennywise in a nest surrounded by eggs. Just imagine the uh, Godzilla film that the Americans butchered years ago, where they go into Madison Square Gardens and there's eggs everywhere. That's pretty much what happens in the book version of it. That would have been cool. That would have worked. Well, I think it would have worked. I would have liked to think it works, but it would have added that extra dynamic to Pennywise. He's actually trying to protect his young. You might actually, even though you wouldn't, feel sorry for him, but... I didn't like you didn't put that part in. Like I said, pick your battles. Put some bits in, some bits not. But yeah, you messed that one up completely. Number five, Mortal Kombat. You know what? Watching these two films, especially in the sets, the parts that were in the 80s, I was looking strenuously for something that looked out of place. I didn't want to look up what was out of place. I wanted to see it for myself. I actually looked up, saw, fought Batman, but no, that was in place. Lethal Weapon 2, that was in place. Mortal Kombat 2, I don't even need to Google this. The flashbacks are set in 1989, and Mortal Kombat came out in 1992. But that's not it. They showed Mortal Kombat 2. That came out in 1993. Great, great game, by the way. I'm not slating the game. Brilliant game. Good film. I've done a review on the film. Go check that out. Back to this video that console should not be there now before anyone says but they were playing street fighter 2 no they weren't they were actually playing street fighter which bizarrely enough came out in the 80s so playing street fighter is fine playing mortal kombat in 19, uh, 1989 is no number four why are there arcade machines so back to 2016 richie goes back to the place where the arcade machines are and he finds a token, that's his totem for the, to make the sacrifices. I did get a bit confused with that, but bear with me. But the one thing is, that room was still full of arcade machines. There was no lock on the door. Those arcade machines are worth a fortune. Even if they don't actually work, people will pay thousands for them. They would have been out that door. They would have been robbed. They would have been on porn stars or something like that. But you, these machines would not have been left there for, what, 20, 30 years, 27 years? No. No, they just wouldn't be there. Number three, no thieves. Now, this actually confuses me about Derry because it's not a nice place. I mean, people bully each other. The parents are horrible to their children. There's attempted murder by throwing someone off a bridge just because he's gay. There's so much wrong with this town. So Bill leaves his bike that he's paid $300. He bought the bike off Stephen King, which was a nice touch from the filmmakers, by the way. He's got this $300 bike left outside at a fun fair for a couple of hours. He comes back and that bike is still there. And that happens again later on when they go to face it during the climactic ending of this film. He leaves Silver, the bike, outside the house. They're down there for hours. Come back, the bike's still there. I'm calling BS on that. That bike could have been gone. Seriously, that town was horrible. No, there's no way people would have left that bike. They would have either destroyed it or stole it. Number two, Wasted Henry Bowers. Something I praised the first film up was the added depth they added to Henry Bowers. I liked the fact they added that inky winky little more depth to his character. So I was actually kind of excited to see what new things they could do with Henry Bowers in this film. No, they did nothing. In fact, they wasted him. Literally, 
He escape. It helps him escape from the mental hospital. He just stalks the crowd, goes after one, fails, goes after another one, dies. You built him up brilliantly in the first film, just to have him wasted. It no, it did. It didn't work. It wasn't very good at all. Number one, no sequel. I'm not saying we should have a sequel. I'm actually saying no to the sequel. The reason being, in September 2019, Bill Skarsgård actually admitted there are talks of doing an It Chapter 3. No, leave it there. The miniseries was brilliant. This film series was good. Well, part two, part one was good anyway. And yet, they're talking about doing a third one. Why? It's done. Leave it as that. You're now just dragging it out. It's a you're going to turn it into a cash grab. You've, this film's ruined a lot of the stuff that was good about the first film. If you make a third one, you're going to diminish what you've created a lot more. Leave it as it is. It's done. It's dusted. Leave it as it is. Final thoughts. Well, this film has taught me a valuable lesson. Stop getting excited for films. Because films that I'm not really excited for, I seem to enjoy more. This film, especially after watching part one, I was really excited to watch this, to be quite disappointed. It, the first film was very psychological and it had some scary moments. Of course, I'm a 40 year old man, I'm not scared that much. But this one, I found it kind of dull. I actually also felt like Pennywise did take a back seat. Now I said earlier, in the beginning of the film, you had the beginning part of the film where they're all getting back together. It's a little bit slow and boring, but it develops a story and I don't have, actually have that much issue with that. The final act, the final 45 minutes of them and the battle between the Loser's Cub and Pennywise the Clown was actually quite excitable. It was quite good. I was getting into it. It's that middle bit. This seems to be a common problem in horror film, but if you were going to do the way you did, shorten it a lot, but an hour and 45 minutes of flashbacks of them recapping what we missed in the first film. It so let this film down. As I said, you ruined Henry Bowers. Pennywise took a big back seat. You didn't really get that much more of him. <sighs> yeah, I, that's the problem with this film. And it's a horror troupe type thing where they don't know what to do in the middle. Other than that, the acting was pretty good. The casting was brilliant. They match, actually got the ca actors that match the children looks wise brilliantly. Especially as two of the children actually said, we want these actors to play us, and they got who they wanted to. Brilliant. I didn't mind the music. The set design, once again, was beautifully done. There's, the film looks amazing. The special effects are actually okay. They're not, for CGI, they're not actually that bad. It's just the storytelling. The storytelling, the middle storytelling, is what let this film down. I've said this before in a previous film. If you go and make a cut of this film where you get the gang getting back together up until just after they've had the meal and then re-put the film back together just before they go and fight Pennywise, you would have a great, enjoyable film. A bit of a short film, but it'd be brilliant. Not this long, drawn-out film that we got. So, what am I going to rank this film? Uh, I'm going to give a... <laughs> I'm torn. I'm going to give this a six. I did not enjoy this as much as part one. Part one I thought was brilliantly. I don't think they could have improved as much more than what they've actually done. But there's so much wrong with part two. And it shows a lot. <clears throat> anyway, that's what I think about this film. What do you think? Do you enjoy, did you enjoy this film? If you, what's your opinion on the film? Leave it in the comments below. On to next week. We're going to carry on with our series that started in a galaxy far, far away. Any guesses what film I'm doing next week? Take your guesses in the comments below. Until then, if you want to chat with me, catch up with me on social media. Just search for at Berryman81. And I look forward to seeing you next Sunday. Take care. Bye-bye.